Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do API testing using Java in Gradle. And I'm going to show you to create the project from scratch, all the way to having your test, uh, improving your code, uh, and learning the rest assured functionality, uh, functionalities as you go. Uh, but first, I'd like to talk a little bit about the test pyramid. This is just one slide of a presentation that I did in San Francisco. As you can see, it's a test pyramid. And as you are more in the bottom of the pyramid, you are more isolated. You are faster to run and to create. And you are cheaper to find issues. You are cheaper to create. You are cheaper to, to, to run as well. And as you go up the pyramid, you are slower. You need more integration. And you are more expensive. And you are more expensive to create, to run, uh, to execute. API testing is right, is right here and you are more expensive because uh, even if, if you are using machine resources, you're going to take more time to execute. And if you're using human time, then you're also taking more time to execute, more time to create. So it becomes more expensive. And also if you are uh, finding issues, right? Finding issues more in the, in the beginning of the development phase is much cheaper than fighting at the very end. Right. And API testing is right here. This test pyramid is kind of old, maybe 2010. Uh, doesn't have here contract. We don't we, we don't see contract testing here. And also it, it doesn't show the the front end universe, right? Angular and Node, both of them they have unit testing on the UI level. So the test pyramid already changed uh, the join is totally different one, right? But this would, would, would is enough for what I'm going to show related to the API. Right? So let me let's start creating the project. So I have a folder here on my computer called QA Ops Automation API. It doesn't have much, only some images, a README, a license, and the Git ignore. Uh, and I'm going to use this to start my project. I'm on the branch uh, English master. And I'm going to use Gradle, and I have the Gradle version 6.3. I'm using Gradle instead of Maven because Maven uses XML. I really don't like XML. XML, I think, is very polluted. Uh, and Gradle uses either Groovy or Kotlin. I'm going to show here in Groovy. And since it's cold, it's much cleaner. And you, you're going to see afterwards uh, the difference between uh, those two. Uh, but Gradle uses Maven repository, so if you want to use Maven, it's, it's just going to be to handle to handle your dependencies and to have basic tasks. So I'm going to execute Gradle init, and it's going to give me some options, right? The first option is uh, a basic, an application, a library, or a Gradle plugin. I want a, a, a sorry, an application because it's going to give me a lot of stuff out of the box. I'm going to use Java. And for the build script DSL, it's going to be Groovy. And for the testing framework, uh, I'll be using JUnit 4. And the reason why I'm using JUnit 4 instead of JUnit 5, the JUnit Jupyter, is because a lot of people still use uh, JUnit 4. And in this, in this video that I'm doing, and I'll be doing, I would like to focus on the functionality of the rest assured, on how you create API testing, API tests on techniques like deserialization and serialization, how to use builders, Lombok. And I, in, in order for me to do that, I, I would not like to uh, talk too much or, or deviate the focus into the difference between JUnit 4 and JUnit 5. So I'll be crea creating another video to talk about those topics. I'll also be talking later on in other videos about testing in G. Uh, because it has some built-in functionality that JUnit 4 does not, but JUnit 5 already have a lot of stuff that testing in G has. So going back here, I'm going to use JUnit 4. I'm going to leave this as default, also this as default option, and I already have a bunch of stuff here. So if I list, I already have Gradle, uh, Gradle Dub, Gradle Wrappers, uh, Gradle wrappers for the Unix, which is which is this shell script, and this for Windows Gradle W uh, W bat for Windows. So what this give gives me gives me out of the box if I do Gradle W tasks, 
I already have a bunch of tasks here that I can that I can use, right? And one of those are the run. Is the one run run task. And it's going to print here, hello world. I already have uh, that task running the application. And I also have another task called test, which is going to run all my tests. And this, I didn't do anything related to this. You just saw what I did. And it already gave me a CLI, which is great because I can, I can run from any computer, either Unix, uh, a Linux, a Mac, or, or, or Windows. And this is very important because now I have the ability to run in any computer and I have the ability to run also in my CI. So whenever you're doing any automation, you should be able to uh, have running locally very easily. You should be able to run in your CI and you should be able to run your IDE. But th those three are very important. Only running your IDE is going to require a lot of setup and is only going to work on, on your machine. Right. But if you have these, you can you can have a support computer in your work and you use those to run your tests if you wish. So now let me open here IntelliJ. I do have two IntelliJs. I have the Community Edition and I have the Ultimate Edition. The Ultimate Edition is the one that TransferWise, the, the, the company that I work for, gave me. And the Community Edition is the free version. I'll be using the Community Edition because I would like to have the same experience as the majority of the people watching these videos. Therefore, I will be using the, the community edition for all these videos. So I'm going to choose the API. It's going to, it's going to open the Gradle project. I'm going to close this pop-up. And right here, I already have some great stuff. Right? And let me show you, I have the build Gradle, which has all my, I'm going to say, okay, all my, tasks and dependencies and already created some of this stuff for me. So it has the plugin for Java. It has the plugin for the application and the run command is one of those functionality. It has the repositories and the dependencies, the Guava and the JUnit. Right. This is the system, uh, the, the main application uh, dependencies and this is the test implement test dependencies. So this is going to make sure that the test dependency doesn't go to production, which you don't need the test dependencies in production. So what I'm going to do first here, I'm going to clean up a little. This seems to have a lot of stuff, but it's a lot of comment. So I'm going to delete this, which is command delete or control delete on Windows. And I'm going to get rid of all of these comments. Great, much cleaner. If I go to settings, it has only the, the project name. I don't need that too. The, those are my Gradle uh, wrapper, my bat, and my, my shell. Has a lot of stuff related to fig, uh, uh, setting up the project. Uh, I do have also here a Gradle folder called wrapper, and it has the actual Gradle wrapper and have the properties. And here is already have the Gradle version, so that's how we know which version is going to download if it doesn't find it, and some properties for, for me. So this is already clean, right? And since I already clean, I'm going to, and I have a commit, so I'm going to do a quick commit. I'm going to do a, a git commit dash m and put initial project structure. Structure. Oh my God, structure. There you go. I didn't add anything to my staging, right? So I'm going to do git add dash dash all. It's going to add everything and now I can repeat my commit. Great. So if I look at the test, the main, I do have the project, I do have the app, and this is basically a main, uh, a main method that creates the app and returns the, the method greeting, which is just hello world. If I click here, I can run it. This is a pop-up of a plugin that helped me learn the, the IntelliJ uh, shortcuts. I have hello world here already. And I do have also a, the test, which is basically making sure that there, there is something on the greeting, there is any message. And I can execute this one as well. 
and I have a passing test. Great. So I'm going to clean up a little because I don't need the I don't need the main. Right. The, the, usually when you have a, a Java project, you, you're going to have the main and you're going to have the test. Right. The main is where your application code is going to go. And the test, your unit test, your integration test, any of your white boxing test, or white box testing. And in a case like this, we're going to create an API. Right? And I seen projects using putting the API here in, uh, uh, in the same repository, but on a different module. And I have seen cases where they put in the different repository whatsoever, right? And one of the things that's really important is when you're talking about white box testing, the white box knows the code. And this is one example. It's, it's creating the class, instantiating the class and using the classes method, right? And checking the actual, uh, the actual running the actual code of the system. When you have an, a, a functional test, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that the the, the system and the, the test are isolated. You are simulating a user interaction. And the user doesn't know about the code. So if your code is on the same repository, uh, as your functional test in the same repository as the system, make sure they are in different different module. Make sure that you cannot access. Because if you access like we are accessing here in, the, in, in this unit test, then your tests are relying on the system. And if the system has some issues, and that's why you are testing to check if there are any issues, if the system has some issues, your tests won't be able to find those because your testing are relying on the system to do some setup, some, some action, and you, that might lead to a failure, right? A, a, a false positive where something is going to pass and, and you, you, you actually should have failed. So, and that's why I see teams uh, having a different repository whatsoever, because if you have a different repository, then you're not going to be using the code. So I'm going to delete here the, the main. I also don't need these tests. And I'm going to clean here the build gradle because I don't have a main application. Right. And I do have now, I'm going to enable our import. I do have now some changes as well. Uh, this should have been into my, been going into my git ignore. I'm going to put it here into my git ignore because I don't need to commit anything related to that idea. Those are uh, IntelliJ specific uh, folder and any folder and any IntelliJ is going to create that. So you don't need to be um, be committing those. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, it's still here, but anyhow, uh, I deleted the I deleted the app and I cleaned the test. So I'm going to git add dash all dash dash all and I'm going to get status and I'm going to remove the idea because I don't need this. Então, so I'm going to be using this command here and this as well. Give it a space, get the status. Now it's removed. And the last commit was the initial project. And since this, this is just cleaning, I'm going to Put in the same commit, which I'm going to amend the commit. I'm going to leave it at it as is, and it's going to be in the same commit. Great. One of the things that I would like to show you real quickly is how Gradle creates the project, uh, the, the tasks, right? So I can, so this is Groovy, so I can do task, and I can do a create a name, which is going to be run tests. And I, I'm going to give it a, a type of this task. And the type is test. And I'm going to open and close. So just by knowing, just by the type test, it knows that it's going to run the test. And it also knows that the tests are here because this is a pattern of Java. Uh, if I put in my, if I had put in my, my test in another uh, module, in another package, 
then I would have to set up my grader. But since I didn't, it's already you already understand everything. So I'm going to create a, my I deleted the test, right? So I'm going to just create a simple test, which is assert that that's a hemcrest library that I'm going to say one is one. And I'm going to import the is import static core matches is and I have here my test. If I run it, I'm going to use the shortcut Control Shift R and it ran. So my test works. I'm going to run Gradle run tests, which is the one that we just created and it works. But one of the things that I like to do is always test your test. Make sure that your tests are failing when it should have failed. So I'm going to rerun it and it failed. And if I open this file here, this is my report. I see that it failed for the correct reason. This would be the report that you see uh, if you're running this on a CI or on a, on a server. So great, so we have a, a test. So let me put it here. I don't need this, right? Because you already have by default. And one of the things that also I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the Guava. I don't need this. And I'm going to change a little the test implementation. If I look at my external libraries, I have JUnit 12 here, 4.12, right? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the 12 for a plus. And here it's going to update and it's going to use start using the JUnit 4.13. So if I had put plus instead of a four, it's going to get any new version of JUnit. And I don't I don't want that because when you change a version, it's going to have uh, some crashing ch changes, some actual real changes. And it can change a method, it can, it can change the way uh, the library works, and it could break a test and you could lose some time trying to figure out what happened and then you're going to have to fix it. So what I prefer to do is I rather choose the time when I'm going to do uh, a real update of a version. But when it's a subversion like this one, I just uh, leave it up to the, my dependencies to, to do that. So as soon as I have a new one, it's going to update as I just showed you. And this is good because it's going to be a security update. It's going to be minor changes, minor upgrades. It probably won't break my anything. And, and I don't have to keep changing those versions every time there is something new. It, it's going to be up to my actual dependency manager, in, in this case, my Gradle. And what else? Let me to take a look at my plan. And I'm going to finalize here. Uh, I have an updated my test and I updated my dependencies. So I'm going to do another commit, git add Gradle, and I'm going to do git add, I'm going to do git commit dash m update dependencies. And I'm going to add the test, git add test. And I'm going to do git commit dash m and create my first, add the first test. Great, right? So you, you, this video is in English as you, as you can see. And I have a few branches, right? So, and I'm going to put the EN for English and PT for Portuguese. Every video is going to be in two languages. And I'm going to create a branch for this project. And I'm going to do git checkout dash B for creating a branch and entering it. It's going to be English. First video, uh, initial, initial project. Great, and now I'm going to push this and this is done, right? Thank you for watching uh, this video. If you have, if you liked it, give, give it a thumbs up. In the next video, I'll be showing you how you can uh, create your first test and use more dependencies and rest assured, and you're going to create the first API test. So give, uh, subscribe for you to receive uh, the, the notification for the next video. And if there are any topics that uh, you'd like me to cover, uh, please let me know in my comments and uh, I can put those on my backlog, okay? Thank you.